The Newsday continues here on One News Now. I'm Pauline Verzosa. Kingdom of Jesus Christ leader Pastor Apollo Kibuloy and four other accused are currently under the custody of the Philippine National Police. And to tell us more about this, we have our mobile journalist Merimon Reyes joining us live from Manila. Merimon, what went down during the police's presentation of Pastor Kibuloy uh, to the media and the public yesterday? Yes, Pauline, tulad na nabalita natin kahapon, nung hinarap kasi doon sa press conference itong si Kibuloy, plus yung four co-accused niya doon sa qualified human trafficking, nakatype kasi at balot-balot na yung kanilang mga muka. When we requested kung pwede bang medyo nagkakaroon kasi ng mga pagbulong or request yung mga media kung yung face mask, pwede bang matanggal, hindi tayo napagbigyan ng pagkakataon na makita sila. Two minutes na sila pinresent sa media, so pinaalis din sila pagkatapos nito. And with that, Kino-confirm na nila DILG Secretary Benher Abalo, sila General Torre at General Marville na nasa kustodiyan na nga ng pulisya itong limang tao. And so far, ngayon ay ibinalita rin ni PNP Spokesperson Colonel Jean Fajardo na nag a pa lang daw sila sa kanilang kustodi at sinerve daw sila ng kanilang breakfast ng itlog, corned beef, rice at saka coffee. However, kahapon din kasi medyo napag-usapan din at tuloy-tuloy yung debate kung nag-surrender daw ba o na-aresto itong hmm. lima. And ang nasabi nila na i-ILG Secretary Benher Abalos plus sila General Torre na parang formality na lang daw yung sinasabi ng panig ng KOJC na nag-surrender si Kibuloy dahil daw ayaw nang matuloy yung lawless violence na nagaganap sa compound. Sinabi na Secretary Abalos na either way, doon at doon mahahantong daw yung sitwasyon ng negotiation na within 24 hours, ultimatum ng BNP na dapat sumurender na sila and sumurender itong si Kibuloy sa ISAF. And so far, yun pa rin yung sitwasyon sa ngayon. Magkakaroon ng press conference din mamaya sa Armed Forces of the Philippines dahil unang-una, nag-file ng motion para maglipat ng kostodiya itong si Angka Ang Panig ng KOJC para malipat yung kostodiya ni Kibuloy mula sa PNP papunta sa AFP. Dahil nga sa mga lumipas na araw at linggo, sinasabi ng panig nila Kibuloy na hindi nila nararamdaman yung safety at security dito sa panig o kasama nila ang pulisya. At the same time, Nag-file din ng motion for a uh, house arrest. Itong panig ni Kibuloy dahil sa katandaan ng kanilang leader na nasa 74 years old na. And so far, naglalakad na rin at inaasahan na natin na anytime soon, haharapin na rin ni Kibuloy at saka ng kanyang kampo o yung apat na co-accused yung kanilang mga kaso. Kay Kibuloy, kaso on child abuse, sexual abuse, gagawin niyan doon sa Quezon City Regional Trial Court. And as a passive RTC naman, yung kaso niyang qualified human trafficking poli. Mm -hmm. Meri mo, nabanggit mo nga, no, ang uh, kampo ni Pastor Kibuloy ay humihingi ng house arrest. Uh, mukha bang magagrant ito? Uh, what's the possibility na uh, malalagay nga sa house arrest itong si Pastor Kibuloy imbis na sa kulungan? Depende kasi yan sa magiging labas nung pinaka-motion na ihahantong ng legal team ni uh, Pastor Kibuloy. Baka naman magkaroon talaga ng legal grounds para mag-grant sa kanila itong house arrest. So aantabayanan natin kung paano nga ba magpo-proceed o magpo-progress itong motion nila. Kasi kapa-file lang nito kahapon at ngayon ay haharapin na rin daw nila yung mga kaso ni Kibuloy plus yung apat na co-accused. So we'll see and we'll go from there kung ano na nga ba. Kasi nung kahapon nung naglibot din tayo sa PASIC RTC, even sa QZ RTC, wala pa yung presensya nilang lima or ni Kibuloy mismo or nung legal team niya. Mm -hmm. Ang latest update natin yung motions na final. So ngayon na abangan natin kung ano yung magaganap sa kanila. Mm -hmm. Mary Mon, earlier you mentioned, ano, sabi ni SILG Abalos, na formality na lang uh, yung paggamit ng terms kung uh, surrender, capture, etc. Uh, pero sa panig ng KOJC, uh, specifically sila attorney Torion, ano, are they still maintaining na hindi na-capture itong uh, si Pastor Kibuloy and he indeed surrendered? according to them. Yes, Pauline. Yan pa rin ang pinanindigan at ginigiit ng panig ni Lucky Boloy na Unang-una sa lahat, yung reasoning kung bakit hindi raw makontak or nagkakaroon ng communication dito kay Kiboloy dahil inaantabayanan nito kung ano yung legal steps na maaari nilang gawin tungkol doon sa nangyayaring guluraw sa kanilang compound. So until ngayon, yun pa rin yung reasoning nila sumurender. Hindi raw na-aresto, hindi raw na-dakip, hindi raw na ano itong si Kiboloy kundi sumuko raw siya para sa kapakanan ng kanyang simbahan. Mm -hmm. And Mary Mon, uh, may more details na ba kung uh, talagang uh, nag nasa loob lang pala talaga ng KOJC compound itong uh, si Pastor Kibuloy nung siya ay nag-surrender sa mga pulis? Sinusubok nating humana puli ng iba pang uh, dokumento na makakapagsuporta sa sinasabi ng KOJC na nasa labas daw itong si Kibuloy na nasa mga bulubundukin daw hmm. na lugar sa Davao at pumasok lang daw sa loob ng compound. 
Pero ang nasabi kasi Johnny DLG uh, Secretary Benjar Abalos, kung nasa labas daw itong si Kibuloy during that time or during the week na hinahanap siya and months, dapat daw ay lumisan na, lumipad na daw siya sa mas malayo, tumakas na, hmm. or mula doon daw sa lugar na yun, magsusurrender si Kibuloy. And dahil you know, bantay sarado nila, lahat na lumalabas pasok sa loob ng compound at pinanindigan nila since day one daw or before sila makapag-deploy ng pulisya na nasa loob ng compound itong si Kibuloy, yun yung nakikita nila. Nasa mm -hmm. loob pa rin talaga si Kibuloy, simula pa lang na pinaka-umpisa ng paghahanap sa kanya. Alright, thank you very much for that report. That was our mobile journalist, Merimon Reyes. A Kingdom of Jesus Christ legal counsel attorney Israelito Torion maintains that Apollo Kibuloy surrendered and was not arrested. Here's an excerpt from his interview on The Big Story. He was Today? not arrested. He was well, not yes, arrested. Right. Okay, it was let's a just, voluntary surrender. Let's keep yes. our focus to the last 24 hours. So, okay. was he arrested? Mm -hmm. was he, did he surrender voluntarily? No. Okay, he, so, he surrendered voluntarily. Actually, Mama Serlias, I think... Uh, um, before that, we had a negotiation with the PNP through uh, Major General Silo. But then again, of course, we understand that his uh, higher up uh, would not uh, favor granting us some reprieve. So uh, we were forced to uh, talk to the KISAF. No? Mm -hmm. As early as August 13, I think uh, uh, I, I um, requested uh, Governor Hubahib, Edwin Hubahib, my other client, who who was previously uh, uh, suspended but now back in his position, to uh, have uh, an audience with the AFP through the ISAP. And since August 30, we already had that uh, mm. negotiation. So it was actually the ISAP who uh, um, arranged the uh, surrender, ma'am. Okay. And um, as a matter of fact, um, no, my big thanks to General Hambala, General Peralta, the Colonel Ruiz, Colonel uh, Kapadin, because they, uh, I'm very sorry for revealing their names, uh, but I have to tell the truth because uh, PNP seems not to comply with their promises. Um, and um, it was them who uh, erased everything. And, uh, but they insisted for the involvement of the police mm. because they understand that the police need to save their faces and that uh, it was even, um, it was even uh, uh, some members of the ESA who helped us Okay. Where did this that, happen, uh, Pastor? Attorney, attorney yes. where? where? Where did this happen? San po nagyari, no? When uh, Pastor Kibaloy uh, met up with ISAF and uh, perhaps Governor Jubahib, where did this happen? Did it happen inside the compound? No, it was uh, Governor Jubahib only uh, uh, arranged the meeting as early as August 30. But okay. um, the, the, I don't know where the ISAF got uh, Pastor uh, Kibaloy, mm -hmm. but uh, what happened was that um, the ESAF insisted that it, he should be um, arrested inside the compound so that uh, no honor can be broken because the police has already spent so much. And uh, it was the ESAF who insisted that, uh, what's it called, this, the PNP should be made to appear as the one who received his custody. Under what? Rule 113, oh. Section 2, ma'am, an arrest has been defined as... Uh, uh, it is made uh, by the actual restraint of a person to be arrested. Now, um, there was no actual restraint that, that happened. And now for the latest on the weather, Pagasa is monitoring two low-pressure areas in the country. The first LPA northeast of extreme northern Luzon has exited the Philippine territory. It is no longer expected to directly affect the country. The second LPA, east of eastern Visayas, remains outside the Philippine area of responsibility. It is expected to develop into a tropical cyclone and enter par in the coming days. For now, the southwest monsoon or habagat will continue to trigger rains in some parts of the country. Affected areas include Ilocos, Zambales and Bataan, as well as Metro Manila and the rest of Luzon. What is next for world number three poll voter EJ Obiena? In an exclusive interview with Denise Tan on The Long Take, Obiena reflected on his career and his performance in the 2024 Paris Olympics. He also shared his plans for his career in the future. Catch The Long Take with EJ Obiena today at 6.15 p.m. only here on One News. You can catch it via Signal TV channels 8 and 250 as well as on Signal Play.
Now travelers flock to the 35th Philippine Travel Mart in Pasay City to check out and experience the rich culture of every province in the country. Mobile Journal, Denise Valdesancho with that report. Mabuhay to all travelers! Come and let us take a look at the wonders of the Philippines here at the 35th Philippine Travel Mart. Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao? You name the destination because the 35th Philippine Travel Mart got it for you. Located at the SMX Convention Center in Pasay, the three-day travel fair boasts its grand regional pavilions. Now on its third decade, Filtoa Secretary General Harold Tondo shared that this year's PTM envisions a more digitalized version for the next generation. Um, as you can see here from the back, we have the different regions showcasing their different products as well. This is the first ever digital part of uh, doing uh, Travel Mart. Uh, previously, uh, when people would like to visit here, they use it in a traditional way of purchasing the ticket. But right now, we started doing the pre-selling of tickets online as early as August. Department of Tourism Secretary Cristina Garcia Frasco, together with other government officials, headlined the opening of the event. As early as 9 a.m. last Friday, September 6, people from all over the country feasted their eyes on the exhibits. And each booth did not disappoint in making the visitors experience the rich culture of every corner of the country. Some of those who visited were college students fascinated with the gimmicks each booth has to offer. Sa may bohol siya, and then may part ng sorsogon. And etong boracay dito, nakita namin yung ano, yung, yung sand na... Literal na sand. Uh, Nagaling po na, na sand boracay. from boracay. With the theme, Love the Next Gen Tourism, over 300 tour operators, tourism offices, travel agencies, airlines, hotels, and resorts were brought together in a single event. Of course, our mandate is to always help the DOT, the Department of Tourism, with their promotion of love the Philippines. But this time, we put emphasis on the different uh, practices of the Filipinos when it comes to responsible tourism, which is the, the sustainability, uh, inclusivity, health and wellness, and of course, the uh, innovation or digitization. The Viltoa also takes pride in the emerging destinations of the Philippines, taking the center stage in this year's PTM. You know, uh, hindi natin alam na ang pag-asa ay pwede na palang bisitahin, but uh, pag-asa is open for tourism. The Pagasa Island, uh, Marawi is also one of the emerging destinations, but um, if you go to Zamboanga, Zamboanga Peninsula, because there's a lot of different parts of Zamboanga that are lesser known to public. Uh, if you go to a visit there, you will see more of the uh, different offerings. Aside from the 18 Philippine regions, the 35th Philippine Travel Mart also expanded the packages it offers globally. This includes popular international destinations such as Asia, the U.S., Europe and even Australia in the hopes of a better and bigger tourism for the country. Mobile Journal Denise Valdesancho. We are One News. And those are the top stories of the hour. I'm Pauline Verzosa. We are One News.